What's up everyone? The weekend is here. It is officially Beer O'Clock. It's Invisible Walls, episode 96. So we put up our review pods, guys. Saw some confusion on that on the site. Uh, just to reiterate, we are not getting rid of our full reviews. We'll never do that. Um, we're just doing review pods so that we can review more games, so that we can get our opinion out there on a lot more stuff. It uh, looks like you guys like them. The first couple of review pods we did did really well. Uh, <laughs> over 200 and some thousand views for, for one of them, for Resident Evil 5, I believe, and over well over 150,000 for uh, Assassin's Creed 2. So it looks like you like them, guys. Uh, there's going to be a lot more coming. Uh, there's another reason we're doing that we'll, we'll sort of explain to you in the future that we can't talk about yet. But um, there's actually a news article on the site right now. So if you guys have any comments, uh, questions, or concerns about them, feel free to jump in there and leave your comments in the comments section. We will be reading each and every one of those. So uh, make sure you get on there and make sure that your voice is heard. Sitting in on the show today, first of all, we have some really awesome games to talk about today. I know a lot of times we, uh, we may sound like Debbie Downer when we talk about games. I think about we have some stuff today that we are really psyched about, so it should be a good, exciting, and positive show. And here to share that with you is Daniel Bloodworth. I just want this show to go up at like 9 a.m., so when you say beer o'clock... <laughs> it's beer o'clock somewhere, brother. <laughs> in Europe, it's always beer o'clock. <laughs> right, right. True. Brooks Huber's on the show today. Hey, everybody. Miguel Lopez, a purveyor of the review pod. What's up, guys? The world is not ended. It's all good. <laughs> and sick boy, Ryan Stevens. Bubble boy. Yo. He's going to plow through it today, Ryan. What exactly is it do you have? The monkey pox, SARS, <laughs> AIDS. <laughs> I didn't think there were AIDS anymore. I thought they got rid of that. <laughs> no, 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 no white cells. I was always funny to make jokes about AIDS. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, we got a lot to get to, so let's get on it. All right, first we're going to talk about a game, and I have to say that this may be the game from the last year or so that I've been most pleasantly surprised by, and that game is Just Cause 2. Bloodworth, you took the demo. I was kind of peeking over your shoulder, talking to the PR guys about it. Um, is it as awesome to play as it was to watch being played? Yeah, it's pretty fun. I, I think uh, playing it, you kind of have to like readjust your mental, you know, your, your, your kind of... Uh... Your, your conventions because the, the control scheme's not like every other game, you know. Well, it looks like there's a lot. Yeah, you have uh, guns and you have grenades and you also have uh, grapple and a parachute. Um, and but like stuff like aiming down the sights, you don't hit the left trigger. You, you click on down the stick and uh, and it's uh, old school. Yeah, <laughs> but but it's it's funny because you know it's a big open world game. It's like 400 square miles and it kind of lets you go whichever way you want to go. Um, but it, it, it doesn't really worry too much about realism. You know, you just take, oh, no. the, you take that grapple hook and you just get some momentum and you just pop out a parachute and you start flying around. Right. And, uh, and then there's, you know, all kinds of different vehicles you can just pick up. Um, but I think the grapple is what really makes You could be it. driving a car and get out of the car and ride on the hood of the car yeah. while the car is still moving. And Yeah, and then like go down to the front and grab the bumper and use it as cover and start shooting behind you. It's insane. <laughs> What's yeah. really cool that really blew me away is the grapple hook and how versatile it is. Some of the stuff I saw them doing with that thing, like I just literally just stood there and just laughed like over and over again. Yeah, they've got a lot of fun stuff that they do with it with the uh, ragdoll physics and stuff. But you can, I mean, from a simpler perspective, you can just throw it out, grab a guy, and then dual wield submachine guns and juggle them in the air. Right. Um, but then you can also um, grab two points, and basically you're using both ends of the rope. And so you can, like, grab two guys and then knock their heads together as they, they bounce into each other. <laughs> Or grab a guy and hook him onto the back of a moving car, drag him down the road. Or grab a guy and not put him up on a ceiling and just watch him hang there as you shoot him. That was awesome. He like he, he grappled some dude, hung him to the ceiling about four feet below. He's like hanging there helplessly, like screaming, and then you just stand there and just light his ass up while he's like hanging from the tether. Like yeah, the animations and and the audio effects make it really pay off. You know, with uh, just yeah, the the physics definitely around, pay yeah. off because it makes it like a toy that you can play around with. Can, can you grapple while you're <clears throat> parachuting? Yes, yeah. you can. You can actually grapple tether... seemed very versatile. It seemed like you could use it in just myriad ways. Yeah, one of the problems I had in the first game is while you're parachuting, if you lost your momentum, you'd just really slow down. But now you could grapple to the ground or any other object while you're parachuting and just speed yourself up. When I was watching, it, it was mostly the developer who was playing, and he was pulling off all this crazy stuff that you guys are describing. Like, how, how hard is it to do 
you know. I think it's just a matter of a little of adjustment. I mean, I was starting to do it already, you know. He was grappling onto like telephone poles and then hanging onto the side of the telephone pole. It was almost a little bit like Spider Man at times. Yeah. And not at all like Bionic Commando, hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> no, because there's not a swing. It's a right. very straight grab onto something. Do you have to switch in and out of these things? Or you always have access to your grapple hook, right? Yeah, it's, it's just, just a button bumper. press. Yeah. Is there so. any sort of. Uh, you said like people would slam heads. Is, is there some sort of like elasticity, or like yeah, buoyancy to it or whatever? Yeah, it, it basically pulls whatever towards. So it's kind of like a bungee as well, or yeah. Okay. You can also um, grapple. You can be in a helicopter, grapple a tank or a car to the helicopter, and then lift <clears> off with <throat> the helicopter and use the car or the tank as like a battering ram. <laughs> <That's insane. laughs> I know you're only limited by your own imagination. Yeah, there's, there's a lot of destruction elements to it too, kind of like Red Faction Gorilla. And yeah, you can so, just completely destroy buildings. And, and that's how he was describing, I, I don't know if you know more about how it works, but he was describing this how, part of the unlock system, so you blow up enough stuff and you... you yeah, know, it sounds like a chaos meter. Yeah, you pull up your chaos machine. and then you, you get other missions in, in that area or whatever. Because uh-huh, he said after right after the first mission, it pretty much gives you the whole island or the whole map to explore wherever you want to go. And, you know, a big part of this game was taken up into the air and just... Yeah, really looking down. Where, where does it take place? I mean, is it just an island? It's like a I'm yeah, southeast curious. Asian island. But it has like a bunch of different like yeah, uh, climates. Yeah. There's stuff. jungles, deserts, and snow. Yeah, basically. that was one complaint too about the first one is that everything looked really repetitive. It took place, I think, in Cuba, <coughs> so it's a very tropical island. And now with like the snow climates and the, I think maybe it has desert or yeah, some the, of the other the, a lot of RV rolls, desert stuff. I'm not, I'm not convinced on the setting. I think that's one sort of caveat is I think the game could have been a lot more fun and given you a lot more latitude if it was set in maybe a sci-fi setting or whatever. It just, it also seems so, it's like you were saying, it's not very realistic. It seems so outlandish that I think it would make maybe more sense in your mind if you were in some kind of a sci-fi or a futuristic yeah. setting. I mean, yeah, I kind of see it in like kind of how mercenaries is. You know, it's the same kind of thing. You just go around and blow the crap out of stuff and, mm-hmm. that, that came and throw guys too. around. It's not, I mean, it's not super important, but how do they justify it, right? Like, isn't this guy kind of like a mariachi, you know? <laughs> His name's Rico. Right. He's like Rico Suave or something. <laughs> so, something like that. Yeah. And the, the way the mission structure works, I was asking him this time around, you still work, um, you could do fractions if you want to and help some of the gorillas out on the, on the team or on the on ground, but um, you also work, do you know, for, is it an agency or something that he was talking about? And, uh, well, you're there to, uh, <coughs> do, like, the boss from the first game has gone rogue or whatever, uh-huh. so you're there to hunt him down, basically. You're there to use the zip line to, like, make tanks into battering rams for helicopters. <laughs> I think the mission <laughs> structure is kind of like Assassin's Creed too. You could follow the storyline if you want, but there's also all these other variables waiting for you if you want to pick up and play. Did they yeah. say that there's going to be multiplayer? Uh, the zipline stuff sounds like, or even if it was just like... probably one of those uh, things that I didn't hear anything about and that everybody else knows. But I, I was just thinking like Crackdown, like, you know, Crackdown didn't really have multiplayer, multiplayer, but you could just fool around with your buddies and like throw cars at each other and stuff like that. I wonder if there are any points in the game where like, say there's a bunch of guys riding motorcycles down the road, if you can shoot the grapple across the road to a tree and mm-hmm. then sort of clothesline them as they drive by. I, I bet you can. I think that's what I love about this game is that it, you can be creative while you play. So few games give you enough freedom to really experiment and try stuff like that that yeah. I think that's going to be half of the fun of the game. I don't even know that I care about the story or the missions. Mm-hmm. I just want to get in there and fiddle around with it. Okay, another game they brought in this week. Ubisoft came by with Red Steel 2. Electric Boogaloo. I think uh, the first Red Steel was probably one of the more disappointing games in recent memory, only because of the trailers that they had put out for and, it. And well, those, those, those screenshots, too, and everyone was like, oh my God, the Wii's going to be a graphical powerhouse. Okay. Well, and just, I think overall, just the potential, you know, there that, you know, the Wii remote had, and then here's a launch game to where it kind of doesn't work. I, I, I think... still had fun with Red Steel. I mean, yeah. for, a, for a launch title, when you think of it in the realm of this was a launch title, I'm not saying it's great, but I don't think it was like abysmal. Or I think anything the problem like that. was that the trailers that they made for it, it made it seem like you, we didn't know what, what, how, what the Wii was going to be capable <laughs> Love at that point. Yeah. So they show him like hiding behind the couch and doing all this stuff and like popping out and shooting and you're like, can the Wii like recognize the objects in my living room and can I hide behind them and use them for cover? So I think when it ultimately came out and it was kind of a waggle I, game. I don't know if I ever believed it that far. Yeah, I, don't think but so I thought either. the sword fighting was going to be a lot more than. Ryan, can't you let a man dream? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. Apparently not. I don't know. I, I always try to. Uh, I mean, people melanin. may disagree with this after they watch the show a lot, but I always try to give everything the benefit of the doubt, and I try to dream big, and I always hope big, and inevitably I always end up disappointed, which you also probably see on the show a lot. <laughs> but I, I didn't know if you, it would recognize you were behind the couch, but I thought it may have some sort of interplay with the environment. 
And some of that may have had to do with the fact that there was that like Nintendo on family <laughs> video that came out. Yeah. I think I was maybe letting that creep into my expectations of the wheel. What, what are your thoughts on Natal? What? What are your thoughts on Natal? Are you going to turn it to, turn into Godzilla in your, in your living room? <laughs> <laughs> Piss off your neighbors. So Red Steel was a bit of a disappointment. I think we all had some... <coughs> Stevens is dying. <laughs> I was that disappointed. Hang in there. I think we all found some modicum of fun from the first Red Steel, but inevitably I think we were all a little bit disappointed at least. But So Red Steel launched the Wii Remote. Now Red Steel 2 is going to be the first sort of full action-adventure game for the Wii Motion Plus. We've all played Wii Sports Resort. We kind of understand its capabilities, but now we get to see what it's going to be like in an action-adventure game. So I actually took, took this demo, so I got to uh, check it out pretty closely. Um, I think it might be a little bit like the first one. <laughs> no, <Uh-oh. laughs> well, no. First of all, the the Wii Motion Plus works amazing in the game, and you'll see we're actually going to put up a video very soon where the developers walk us through what, exactly how you can calibrate Motion Plus in the game. It's insane. It's like a whole screen full of menus. You can adjust the bounding boxes, the the turn speed, like. What it does when the Wii Remote is off the screen, it's crazy in depth what you can do with the Wii Motion Plus. But then ultimately, once it's integrated into the game, it's, I don't know that it's as groundbreaking as you might hope. It does have the one-to-one replication with your swing, and I think that's, that's good, but one thing I noticed in the game is it just seems like the enemies just sit there and just wait to be killed. Well, just tell me off. if I'm wrong, but I got, I got the, the sort of light gun game <coughs> monster vibe off it, you know? Like, well, that was the thing. You could use your guns and you could shoot a guy a couple times, and that would be enough to stun him enough that you could run up and, like, finish him off. And they did show us areas that were almost the end of the game, mm. and I was hoping, okay, well, maybe this is the point where it steps up the difficulty and it changes that, but it really didn't. Um... But I, one thing I do like is the visuals. I think they made the right choice going with sort of the cell shaded look that they have. It definitely gives the game a style. Um, the yeah, last... the whole East and East West thing, you know, with the Ninja Cowboys, it's pretty cool. Yeah, I mean, I can't say that I've seen a game before that sort of follows that aesthetic. Uh, Rising Zan, Samurai Cowboys. That's right. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> PS1 game. Yeah, that was a long time ago. Yeah, though, good, so. good theme song. The game looks good. It looks crisp. It runs. In fact, one of the builds that they had here had the frames per second running in the bottom right-hand <clears throat> corner of the screen, mm-hmm. and the sucker never dipped below 60 frames per second, ever. It just ran solid at least 60, and a lot of times it was popping up to 70 and 80. So the game runs like a dream. I mean, they did a really good job on the engine. I think the game looks great. I think the game could be fun. My concern is the level of, of competition I, you get from the enemy AI. You know, I, I played it at TGS, and I would say, like, right out of the box, it was more fun than playing Red Steel 1. Yeah. Right out of the box. I, I think, think it's just probably the one-to-one better, one sword play is going to make it a it's, little it's better. It's just, I think it's just a better game all around. I mean, at the very least, I think I feel pretty competent with that. Yeah, one I don't thing know if I will say is... Superstar or anything. Yeah, you don't really get those AAA games on the Wii, especially from third parties. They're always like these little compilations of this or that, or if they do an, an action-adventure, it looks like it was a PlayStation 2 game that they repurposed the controls for the Wii. This is a game you can definitely tell was built from the ground up for the Wii, and and it, it definitely shows in, in the performance of the engine. It runs great. The visuals look awesome. I wouldn't say it's up to 360 or PS3 caliber, oh. but it is Motion Plus only. It will not work with a normal Wii remote. So you can't like go into the settings and turn off Motion Plus and just use Waggle to swing. Right. Like You have to have the Motion Plus, and that might limit their sales as well. I mean, so it's the Donkey Kong 64 of <laughs> this generation? <laughs> or, or the Perfect Dark. Perfect Dark, you could still play 15% of the game. Yeah, <laughs> without the RAM expansion. I would look for that box art. That's pretty funny. Do you, do you think that uh, Nintendo is going to be the one to finally make a sword play game that's cool like it sounds like this is is kind of there like the sword play itself works it does it's great but, but the enemy design is what you know i guess maybe they didn't have enough faith in players to to be able to to grasp you know sword fighting with one-to-one yeah i mean it may be a case where they're like look this is new to people so maybe we gotta dumb it down a little bit and make it a little bit easier um we only played it in one difficulty setting so i don't know if you jack up the difficulty if suddenly the game changes i know the setting that they played on the game seemed really really easy Mm -hmm. Uh, there's some simple puzzles in there but most of them revolve around kill this room full of guys over there's a switch flip the switch now go across the courtyard kill this room full of guys, flip the switch, something happens in the center courtyard, you move on. So it's not a lot of puzzle solving. It really is reliant on combat. So that kind of is a big concern. I think we should have a video preview of the game going up soon where we'll really sort of dig into the nitty-gritty of it. But uh, so far I would say it was an auspicious showing for the game. I was pleasantly surprised by it. So uh, hopefully when we get our hands on the final game, they'll tweak the AI a little bit and it'll uh, be something really worth playing. 
sultans die, kingdoms fall, but the sand remains. All right, next we're going to talk about the Fresh Prince of Persia, the brand new Prince of Persia game, Bloodworth. You went to check it out. You are the man this episode. You've been <laughs> quite the man about town. Now, my fear with this game is they made the game quickly and hastily because of the movie. I think that might be the case. Yeah. Do we have uh, Jake Gyllenhaal's abs? <laughs> no, it actually does not tie into the movie really at all. Um, it's set between uh, Sands of Time and Warrior Within. Uh, so it's pretty much the same character design, character model, and all that. Basically, he goes to his brother's kingdom, and something happens, so his brother decides to use these sand monsters to defeat an army or something, and then everything goes wrong. Uh, so uh, you have your, your rewind back, although they didn't really show that. So it does revert back to that old style of gameplay. Yeah. Yeah, it goes back to that. Um, Can you fight more than one enemy at a time? Yeah, actually, their their combat system is based more on, on crowd control, so you'll fight lots of uh, smaller enemies and then maybe a boss mixed in with them. Uh, but there's not actually any block button or anything. It's, it's more about evasion and, and counterattacking that way and uh, kind of shuttling guys into a corner or whatever. Hmm. Um, the, the big thing that was different, though, is that they have uh, what they called the power of nature, uh, basically, just the, the different elements play into it. So uh, w the main one they showed off was, was water. And so, for instance, now you kind of stop time for water, but not for anything else. So you can use a, a, a waterfall and, like, run across it like your, like your wall run across it. Or if water, if there's fountains well, squirting out. So is it all like kind of puzzling things of time, or is it still heavily heavy on the platforming and climbing and stuff? It's yeah, it's platforming puzzles basically. You know, it's it's very much the same as <laughs> your, your standard Prince of Persia gameplay, but now you have these new elements to play with, and so it it can get kind of complex to where you know you have to use you know, one power and then, you know, let go of the button and push another button while you're in midair to, to dash across or whatever. Did it say how they're going to govern using the sands of time? No, they didn't, they didn't really go into it. the sands that much. They had a pretty straightforward demo that, like, jumped to, like, three different points within the game. Um, so it was very much... The, the thing that seemed weird to me, though, is... Uh, Can you die? Can you die? <laughs> I think you can die. Yeah. And then a British voice goes, "No, that's not how it happened." Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but yeah, they're looking at having some <clears throat> some big set piece battles and stuff like that. The the thing that bothers me though is the screenshots they released don't look anything like the game I saw. Bull no shots. <laughs> yeah, and and actually, me and Johnny were like poking at all the Photoshop things that they obviously did, putting characters into the shots and things. Yeah, like I that. actually looked at some of those with you. You could blatantly tell they smoothed out a lot of curves and airbrushed some of the textures and. Yeah, so I mean, but I I don't know how representative the build I saw was either because it doesn't look like it was running at the full resolution. It looked like it was kind of blurry and some of the textures weren't really up to par yet. Who's so, developing that? Uh, I think it's the standard Prince of Persia team. Really? But. The last Prince of Persia tanked pretty hard, all things considered. I mean, it was a good game. It had a few issues, but, I mean, sales-wise, it did pretty awful. Yeah, that was one of those games where you go to Best Buy a month after its release, and it was already like $30. $39.99. Yeah, but Ubisoft has been doing that since Prince of Persia's hands of time. <laughs> yeah, I remember I got, I got like Splinter Cell, Beyond Good and Evil, and... Prince of Persia, like in a three pack, like yeah, you, when they were all released. Yeah, you got another one for you. Yeah, it was yeah. a really good deal. Yeah, Beyond Good, Beyond Good and Evil too. Where's that? Yeah, <laughs> yeah what happened? They're, to they're that? riding the marketing wave with this movie, and that's why you know I'm concerned with the amount of polish. But the thing that was was interesting because Johnny was there shooting with me, and he saw the demo too, and he had a hard time. You know, just he felt it was like really complicated, whereas the last one was kind of simplified for anyone oh, yeah. to play. So and Johnny's it, a pretty skilled player, so yeah, it's probably not too good of a sign. Well, it, it's yeah. I mean, I think for hardcore, I think it's geared more towards hardcore players, which is kind of funny when it's a movie tie-in. Right, it's going to get a broader audience that's going to have a harder time working with it. I hope they don't destroy the Prince of Persia franchise because, despite how the last one sold, it was still a, a good game. Yeah, and it sucks that it didn't sell, but at least it ultimately the product they turned out was worth paying money for. So, it does concern me a little bit that this one's coming out so quickly. <laughs> Mm. 
next we're going to do something we've never done, which is basically talk about how awesome a month is going to be. And that month would be the month of March. March is the new which November. Which is just mind-blowing. Yeah. <laughs> it's a good time to be a gamer right now, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, you know, you probably noticed not long ago we started doing the Games of Month X, where we kind of give you guys a rundown of what's coming out for that month. And, and so, Ryan, we get some complaints about those videos, right? What's the big gripe? Uh, that a game I'm into is not on the list. And why did we leave that game off the list, Miguel? Because we don't care. <laughs> we hate you. And, and you're, you're adopted. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Everyone has adopted stuff listening to this podcast. Yeah, and now March, I think it's... Feasible. It wasn't even feasible to include all the games in there. It would have been no. like a 20-minute segment. Yeah. But we, we do pepper the opening montage with some other games, so right. maybe you can spot your favorite. It's like, where's Waldo <laughs> with games? Where's the game I give a shit about? <laughs> yeah. So, Brooks, you actually work on those segments each and every month. Yes, I do. Give us a quick rundown of March, just so we can all sit here with our jaws hanging open. All right. Well, this is what we're looking at for our video that's going to be going up, if it's not already up. Uh, the big the big gun starting off is a Battlefield Bad Company 2. Of course. Boom. Booyah. Boom. <laughs> that's the dynamite. And then we got our uh, MLB starting up to uh, Major League Baseball 2K10 and the show. Are we going to be out on the same day? So. And, and normally we wouldn't put sports games on Fight. here, but I think yeah. it was interesting having the, the, the dichotomy of both of those going out on the same day, is it? Yeah, yeah. it looks like yeah. it. Fight. Yeah. yeah. And then, uh, of course, we've got Final Fantasy 13. <laughs> Big one. Oh, yeah. A lot of cheering going on. It didn't be. Yakuza 3 is finally coming stateside. And on the then, uh, same day, which seems kind of like a crossover audience to me. Yeah, and then we got Command How and Conquer. How many copies do you guys think Yakuza will sell? Enough. I think, <laughs> I think it'll Enough be better than two. regret putting it out in the States. Did I you mean, guys play the demo? Two came out in the middle of a freaking holiday rush on the PS2 with, what, no marketing? Yeah. I mean, it's got to do better. Well, you would hope. It's got karaoke. <laughs> you heard about the controversy? <clears throat> to derail this real quick. About Yakuza, how uh, they took away the the Hostess Bar mini games. No. Oh, I didn't know that. Version. In the U.S. version, yeah, why? That's hilarious. Um, I, Sega gives some explanation that this sounds kind of fishy. Um, After playing games like Heavy Rain, where you know you basically play as a stripper, it takes right. off that, that's, clothes. That's really. I was actually playing on Virtual Console. I was playing <laughs> Princess Tomato, what? <laughs> um, and I actually went into a, went into a cabaret, and there was a, like <clears throat> Miss Lemon and Miss like some other fruit, and they were like hostesses. And I was like, even back then, you could see the, the Japanese influence of the hostess bars in this like 8-bit Nintendo game. Wiping wow. down your drink. Right. <laughs> but there, you know, the, the game will have strip clubs, just not a hostess bar. I think it's because, uh, you know, apparently there's a lot of mini games you could play in the hostess bar, and that might have taken too long to, to localize. Well, they just probably uh, lost half their sales. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> All right. What else we got, Brooks? Moving on, we got Command & Conquer 4, uh, God wow, of War that's 3. coming up already. Yeah. yeah, it's surprising. Yeah. And then uh, God of War 3. The big dog. Yeah. Red Steel 2, which we already covered, and then uh, Just Cause 2. So and that's just the stuff that's in the video, right? Yeah, that's just yeah. what our video is. Some of the stuff we cut out, you know, is Supreme Commander 2. Uh, we also have Sonic Classic Collection on the DS. Pokemon's coming out, Silver and Gold. And um, WarioWare, do it yourself. So there's all, and then there's tons is of Is Resonance of Fate next month? Yeah, it's in there. It's uh, it's right it's, after. It's, it's like the a week same after. day as no, it's the same day as Final Fantasy Thirteen. No, I think I got pushed a week. Did it? Yeah, I think I think someone at Sega that must was have like, just happened then. I think someone at Sega was like, "Wait a second, <laughs> <laughs> I have a good idea." So quickly going around the horn, if there's <clears throat> one game that you guys are going to buy in March, what would it be? Stevens, God of War. <laughs> different strokes for different folks. You never know, Miguel. Um. Probably God of War, although I am curious about Yakuza 2. Wow. Three. Yeah. Trace. Well, y- Yakuza as well. He as, well. Two, as in also. And also, <laughs> and plus. Yeah. Yakuza plus. <laughs> Brooks. I'm a big God of War fan, so of course that's at the top of my list, but uh, Just Cause 2, close second. Bloodworth. Yeah, I'm probably still going to go with Final Fantasy 13. Wow. Oh, Perfect Dark, right? <laughs> Xbox Live Arcade. <laughs> I never really got to play that multiplayer, so I'm that'd there. be interesting. I'm going to go with God of War 3, followed closely by Battlefield. So I think, you know, I'll play God of War 3, I'll kind of be done with it and move on, and I'll probably still be playing Battlefield after that. So, Do you think, uh, you know, is there some people here that are assuming uh, Activision is going to release the map pack for Modern Warfare 2? That know, would like be the week cut after cut. The week after. <laughs> if Activision were smart, they put it out on the same day as Battlefield. I mean, it's just business, man. Bam. I mean, that would be cutthroat. Think it could happen? I think there's a chance. Hmm. They haven't really announced a firm date. They've just kind of given like a window. So it 
could very well happen. I don't think it would really alter the sales of Battlefield all that much. Maybe if maybe delay the sales some. Maybe some people would <coughs> jump on and play those new maps before they go and buy it. But I think the people that have decided they're going to buy Battlefield Bad Company 2 are going to buy it, regardless of if they put out a map pack or not. And speaking of which, it segues nicely into the fact that we're doing an hour one for Battlefield Bad Company 2 next week. Um, so make sure you check that out. We'll be showing the first hour of the game in its entirety with a slight tweak at the developer's request that we can't really go into because we don't want to spoil it for you guys. But you'll be able to see the full uh, first hour of the single-player campaign from uh, Bad Company 2 on GameTrailers.com next week. And who will we be able to chat with? You'll actually be able to chat with me. I'm the guy that will be on there answering your questions, although you know, obviously the developers will be on there as well. You'll probably want to talk to them a hell of a lot more than you want to talk to me, and with good reason. <laughs> All right, so right now, Nintendo's Media Summit is going on. Now, generally, they have one or two of these a year. And in all honesty, the last couple of Media Summits kind of sucked. Yeah, I've been to some pretty vanilla ones. Lame. But didn't Mario go, Strikers was a big game at one of them. Yeah, yeah. yeah like the bigs. But on like the flip a side, game was the biggest thing. they've had them where you went and you played Ocarina of Time for 10 hours straight. So they're always hit or miss. This year's is definitely a major on-target hit. Yeah. Super Mario Galaxy 2 is there. Metroid Other M is there. We have the first details on Metroid Other M, and it sounds <laughs> awesome. Yes. Can't say that. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> so the basic premise of the game is you play the game with the Wii Remote turned to the side, and it's like a classic <coughs> 2D side. You are going to die. Yes. <laughs> hey, then you're going to kill I all the rest invisible of us. invisible walls. <laughs> Take us with you. My tombstone. <laughs> So you play like a traditional 2D side-scrolling Metroid, but then you can flip the Wii Remote and point it at the screen any time to go into full 3D. And but, then that is used for your shooting. It's also used for sort of the adventure elements of the game, and, which is an important And, and to be part honest, we've seen this kind of done in like puzzly or indie games. I think of like uh, Crush on the PSP, and there's that like Fez game that's still not out. This is the kind of stuff I love. The stuff where I read about it, and, and Mike Damiani's at the show, and he'll be on next week to give us the hands-on impressions. We're just here basically going on the information that's out there. But it's very rare that I see a game or I hear of a game concept and I read about it, and my mind starts whirling with possibilities. We kind of talked about it earlier mm -hmm. um, with, with you know another game with, that really does that. But Metroid now, I'm like, okay, I don't feel like I've played a game like this before. You start thinking about what's possible with this game. Um, you know, Metroid Prime was a refreshing take on that franchise, and it looks like this one could be just as sort of groundbreaking. Right. Yeah. Yeah, Metroid, I mean, you know, even after the first one, I realized, okay, Metroid can work in 3D. This is, you know, I'm, I'm sold on this. I'm sold on the way this works. This sounds like a throwback, but a throwback in a very enticing way. Well, it's given the fans what they've been begging for, right? Right. A 2D side scroll well, Metroid, Metroid but... Right, <laughs> <laughs> but you know, think about think about a uh, Shadow Complex, how it kind of made a, a, a not very um, not very thoughtful use of 3D. This could be exactly the opposite. It's gonna be way better than that. But this, yeah, you can actually traverse, you know, the areas that are unlocked by that 3D stuff. And I don't know, man, I think it sounds really cool. Yeah, the concept is awesome. And you start thinking about Team Ninja's making the game and how good they are at hand-to-hand -hand combat. And you start adding all this up, and the game sounds like it's going to be the lick. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever that means. Yeah, that one. <laughs> okay. Well, I mean, and, and then it confirms, you know, we've, we've kind of known a little bit about it. You know, the release date's going to be really, really close. And I've been telling you guys that for a while now, that that game was coming out a lot earlier than you thought it was going to come out. Because it's it's... I'm dumped. not surprised with the Metroid release. I'm surprised with the Mario release. Yeah, that yeah. Was in May. By. But it's kind of smart. I figured with New Super Mario Brothers selling so much, and that kind of audience, some of that audience being people that probably only buy one or two games a year, six months after, they're going to be like, time to buy a new game. Oh, there's a new Mario, Mario. game. Maybe I'll buy this one. So that segues know? nicely into Super Mario Galaxy 2, which they're also showing there. And they mm -hmm. gave the release date. It comes out, what, uh, what's May the date? 23rd. May 23rd. May 23rd, yeah. And then Metroid comes out June 27th. Yep. Yeah. That a is a apart. summer full of awesome right there, man. Yeah. I mean, it, the, yeah, but the sad been, part is I'm afraid that we won't have anything been, like that on the Wii for another two, two years. It's been two years since Nintendo put out stuff more than like you know an IV drip of quality every once in a while. I know. Yeah. It's, it's pretty awesome. So we're going to have a lot of good games to play this summer. Galaxy 2, it's like you read about it, and it doesn't sound like it's all that great. It sounds like it's a lot like the one before. <laughs> but one thing that Nintendo is really good at doing is telling you something, and you see, think it's the dumbest thing ever. But then when you see what they do with it, it ends up blowing your mind. But, I will but have say you the seen new... the Yoshi stuff, though? 
The new Yoshi stuff? It's yeah. Like point of control tongue, basically. I, I, I still think that this trailer is a little weaker than the E3 trailer. Like, yeah. I, when I saw the E3 trailer, I, was, I actually got really excited with, uh-huh. like, some of that stuff. This time, it seemed a lot of a lot of the same elements. That kind of weird space dragon thing was cool. Yeah. But, I mean, we the Yoshi stuff, also very cool, but the other just kind of... Um, scenery things didn't do too much for me i mean yeah i'm gonna buy it no doubt i mean the big reveal today is yoshi right i mean that's the well big they, they had yoshi but yeah they're revealing some of the mechanics right yeah some does, of the gameplay does the b-roll have anything more in i depth? didn't see the actual b-roll but b-roll is just a compilation of just like pretty much raw uncut gameplay um same yoshi? things that we already saw in the trailer but just elongated okay you know, yeah, i saw there's like a, he has like a speed power up and like a balloon power up yeah you know what they said they're, they're throwing these numbers out there they're saying 90 percent of the galaxy is going to be entirely new and then they're going to recycle 10 percent of the old game what yeah that's but, what no, I I today. but they're going like to be different objectives i mean like art assets or? No, they're talking about yeah <laughs> Say, they're talking about like how <laughs> the game plays there just better not be another one of those freaking throw the bombs to destroy the trash oh that was horrible <laughs> that was the only thing i didn't like in the entire game yeah yeah and i'm not you had to do it twice Mm. I didn't like to waggle races too much in that game. Yeah. What do you mean? Um, you know, when you're, like, doing the slides. like those, Well, it wasn't those waggle. Sp- it was... It was, yeah. You're it just was, tilting the controller. It was balance, yeah. I think it took a little while to get used to it, but once I got used to it, I thought they were okay. Really? They were great, but... I wouldn't mind some of the power-ups showing up a bit more, like the the ice flower. And what was the other... I can't even remember what the other new power-up was. Oh, yeah, Bumblebee was fun. Bumblebee, yeah. I hope there's more of those, like, um, standalone little level planets instead of those kind of spread out ones, because those are the ones I like the most. Yeah. But I, I hope purple coins are back and all that stuff. I mean, there's a lot of stuff from the first game I hope they actually bring back. Well, yeah, the first game was freaking amazing. Yeah. Our game of the year, the year it was released. So, I mean, it has an awesome foundation to build on. And like I said earlier, a lot of times you hear about Nintendo's games, you're like, eh. And then you finally <laughs> get to play them, and you're like, all right, I get it now. So, New Super Mario was that way for me. Yeah. yeah. I was really surprised at that, and... Yeah, there's a lot of ingenuity that goes on in the uh, House of Nintendo. That's for damn sure. But uh, And then also they announced today the release date for the super huge DSi. Yeah. <laughs> which, are any of you guys interested in that? Well, I didn't, I didn't get a DSi. I don't know. I mean... Yeah, that's the thing. I, I didn't get a DSi either, so if I get a DSi, if I feel a need, I probably will go for an XL. Because Would you nice... get the big one instead of the small one? Portability yeah. doesn't matter so much to me no? anymore, I don't think. I, mean, like, I only bring my DS on like planes, and it's in my backpack. For the yeah. most part, yeah. or but that I'm thing just lying looks like the house. size of the uh, web book that I got for Christmas. It's like it's almost the size of a little laptop. Yeah. It seems it's, like... it's pretty big. I got a private showing of it, and it it is definitely improved in terms of the the visual area and stuff. And uh... seems like if you're gonna make it bigger, then you should increase the functionality because you have so much more space to work with inside the casing that they should have done something. Maybe given it a <laughs> keyboard. I don't know something. <laughs> that's what obviously you can tell. I don't work at Nintendo. I'm like <laughs> give it a keyboard. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's part of it, though, is, you know, the bigger screen, like, for WarioWare DIY, it's going to make it easier to draw your sprite or whatever. Yeah. yeah. Be the more flip precise. note animations. And, and the buttons like look that. so lonely, though, in that big control. They also, what was really <laughs> yeah, interesting, they said, <laughs> like, uh, I'm over here. <laughs> one of the interesting things they said about it is they, they had the same speakers, but because it's bigger, they were able to put more holes into the plastic, and so it's actually louder just because there's more holes in the plastic. Oh, that's well, weird. I, that and it's true. I, like, I saw them side by side. Huh. <laughs> it's bizarre. bizarre stuff, yeah. I wonder what's bigger, the, the DSXL or uh, the Xbox One original They, they also controller. engineered it so that it's not super pixelated or anything. They should have brought, brought back the Game Boy Advance slot. So is that an yeah. iPad well, killer? You're right, considering how big it is. Yeah. Like, that's what I'm saying. The yeah, stuff that, that they could have added could in have there. could have a USB uh, game, game Boy Advance slot, memory card slot, CD Bluetooth. player, everything. Yeah, it would have been cool, too, if they did have like a USB slot so you could just plug it directly in your computer so you could like take photos on it and just dump them in your computer exactly. instead of having to use an SD card. I mean, yeah, all that extra room. I, it just seems like a bit of a wasted opportunity. When I first saw it, I thought it was like the DS for old people. So some of the other announcements that they made, they announced the release date for Dragon Quest. Right. Did we know the full Wait, name? It, I don't think it has the release date there, though. They're gonna be Nintendo's gonna be publishing themselves. But they just not say a date summer of summer. 2010. Yeah, uh, yeah, it's just in the summer. So that's coming out along the same time as Metroid and Mario. What about Sin yeah. and Punishment? What was the release date for that? Sin oh, and Punishment June, beginning of June. June seventh. That finally has a date. I don't know why it's taking them so long to localize that game. There's nothing. Oh, to I'm localize. sure they've been sitting on it. They yeah. should yeah. probably done. sell that game for like a discount. And then like, that's got like 29.99 written all <laughs> over it. <laughs> What about 100 classic books? Yeah, Bloodwork. <laughs> you were raving about that earlier. Well, it. I mean, think about 20 bucks for 100 books. That's a pretty uh, good deal. And you can download new books. Yeah, it looks like the iPhone already beat it. I'm sure it's all just Project Gutenberg I wonder stuff. if that's 
that is trying to make the big DS like a Kindle. What's going to happen with the rest of the year? That's a good question. That's what I'm worried about. All Does these... that mean Zelda's coming out this year? Well, they want it to come out this year, but you know, it's Zelda. Yeah. So if it's not done, I mean, that's why Reggie said when it's perfect. You know, yeah. Onuma's trying to get it done, but nobody can What can tell. we expect in November or December then? Animal Crossing 2. <laughs> oh. uh, we Fit Plus Plus. I mean, it really looks like they're blowing their load here, but the good news about this, <coughs> Pikmin too... Pikmin 3. That's true. Pikmin, well, here's the thing. E3 is going to have announcements. That's yeah. what I'm saying. Yeah. Now E3 is going to be something to remember for Nintendo for the first time in how many years? They're going to have to show something. What about the speculation it's... of a new console? Someone brought that up with me earlier was today. Was it Pactor? <laughs> no, that no, was... I, I, I have some friends that have been pointing to me a lot of rumors about uh, They're like, let's new, push out these DS A-list titles early so we can like announce a new console. And showing you know stuff with like a, the NVIDIA Tegra trip or whatever. Um, it'll be interesting to see how that all pans out. Game Trailers TV is at the Summit doing an episode from there, so you'll be able to look out for that as well. All right, that's going to do it for this week's episode. Once again, another action-packed outing of Invisible Walls. Just Cause 2, Red Steel 2, Prince of Persia, Mario, Metroid, the whole Nintendo Summit. Once again, action-packed and full of glory. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. Invisible Walls is up and out. <laughs>